Hello and in today's ATmega 328B programming we are going to do an overview of the simulator for debugging. So I have a basic code set up here which is actually the ADC code from one of the previous videos. Some things I added to the code is a NOP instruction. So just direct assembler injection of the NOP instruction. So skip one cycle. This is just so I have a breakpoint or an easy way to insert a breakpoint where I don't execute code or anything like that. Then we have our variables that haven't changed since that tutorial exactly the same everywhere and then I just added to the while one a detection if pin D is high so this is to simulate a button input and then we just do a standard conversion over here for the ADC and then set LEDs according to whatever the ADC volt value is okay so to set up the simulator you have to go up here and then I can't remember exactly what this is beforehand but you just click this it will either say no tool or anything and you'll be taken to the project configuration and you'll see tool here so you all have your different tools here or your inline debugger I don't have my picket 4 plugged in at the moment so you'll maybe have your picket 4 or your Atmo ice over here and then you just select simulator and then you save the project now breakpoints are inserted on the sidebar over here as you can see by the red dot when I click on the sidebar that will be a breakpoint now this will stop the code from executing and halt there so you can look at what's going on in the code now we are going to add a few breakpoints here we are going to add one at this knob instruction to tell us hey this pin has gone high and then one at the ADC conversion and then one after we have done everything for the conversion actually we can remove this one because we're just going to loop up here and just want to check how long does this take now to start debugging you can either press this green button up here that start debugging let's also start debugging and break this is more for when you're doing um, when you're doing in circuit debugging with the debug wire interface so we can either click this green button or we can click the start debugging button Okay, so we click the button, it will start compiling, then it will switch over to the debug interface. By default it will look like this. At the bottom we have our different watch tabs and we'll cover that now uh, in a bit. Then we have our memory view over here. It might open in a separate window that's not attached to the IDE itself. You can just simply, if it's not, you can drag stuff around on the IDE itself and just put it anywhere you like it to be. Now over here we can see our internal flash and then boot sections, our register data, our, our mapped IO, our IRAM, our EEPROM and our oscillator. And this is the raw binary output. Usually what I do is with columns I set them to 2 because most of the instructions are 16 bit wide. So now that we have started our debugging you can see it has stopped at the breakpoint and we can add debug points live so we can add one over here to ADC in it. Now the green arrow is now continue. Click that then we will run to the next breakpoint. Then we can say and I'm going to add another one underneath then we can say step into which goes into the function itself and you can continue to step into and you can also say step out of which will return from a function and then we can also say let's add another breakpoint here step over which skips the function and then we can also step into and then step out which returns from the function again so now we're going to run to the next breakpoint in our main loop and that takes a little while now we're over here now we want to time an ADC conversion so what we want is we want the processor status uh, which I have over here you can get the processor status and this is only while the debugger is running which actually an annoys me but it is what it is to get the processor status window you go to debug at the top and then you say windows and then you have all your debugging windows that you may want to use like your watch your memory views so you want to look at two different parts of the memory at the same time then we can use memory one two three four the same with watch one two three four if you want to organize your variables now, unfortunately most of these windows are not available while the debugger is not running so you're gonna first have to start your debugger and then run them from there so you can have your processor status and then it will open in a floating window which you can add wherever I just prefer to add them over here and on the processor status window you can adjust your clock frequency so 
since we're using a 60 megahertz crystal, I adjusted this to 60 megahertz. I believe by default it is one megahertz. And now how long this section of code takes to execute. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I say reset cycle counter. Now reset cycle counter resets the stopwatch and the cycle counter. If you only reset the stopwatch, it does not reset the cycle counter. And then we just click continue and we wait and bam. So our code takes 20 milliseconds to execute an ADC conversion and set the output and send the data over to the UART. So we can clear that again. This time I'm going only to reset the stopwatch. The cycle counter hasn't changed. Then we run it again. Again, you see 20, 20 milliseconds, 21 milliseconds approximately. And it incremented the cycle counter. And then you can also have a look at what is in the working registers while the code is running. Okay, now we are going to manipulate the register. So what I'm going to do is I am going to switch to the IO view, which you can also get by debug, the debug window, and you can see the IO. So what we want is to inject a value into the ADC for us. Then we go to the analog to digital converter peripheral. We expand that and then we look at the bottom. We can extend it up here for the two binary registers, which are these two. Now to inject a value, you don't add the numbers. You actually physically set the bits in in the register. So I'm going to set top register to 3 and the bottom register to 80x. So we step into our function and then we step piecewise. We add a breakpoint at 50. Then we step to the breakpoint and then we can see both these values are 0, which I do not want. So I'm going to add another breakpoint here and we're going to run, enter again. So we see here and then we see we have locals that are nothing here. This is now your variable watch window in local. So I want to see ADCL and ADCH but they don't show up here. Uh, so what's the problem here? We go to watch and the watch window is basically you can watch very globally. So we say ADCL and we say enter and that says unknown location. Did I spell that correctly? Apparently yes I did spell it correctly. Okay this is not exactly demonstrating what I wanted it to demonstrate. Okay so we watch here. Now we want to see what our conversion value is. So we just change our ADCL to convert and that's what I wanted to show you. It shows optimize the way. Okay so this variable does not exist in code because the compiler is smart enough to optimize our code and take away variables that aren't necessarily useful and just waste cycles. So we have two options here. We can take convert and we can make that a volatile variable but that is not very conducive if you keep having to change the code and it's not good for optimization. So what we do is we stop running by clicking the red button. We go back to the simulator, go to our tool chain. We see our AVR GNU C compiler and then we click optimization. Now by default it is optimization level 1. What we want is optimization level 0. So no optimization in our code. This is mostly if you want to watch how a piece of code executes rather than have an optimized timing. So we select none there. We save and start the debugging again. It will recompile for us with the new settings. We stop at the breakpoint and now you can see convert has a number to it. Now we just run again until we get to the debug points we want to be at. Then we see our ADC convert. Then we add to our watch window ADC L and you can see they're now also showing up as not as unknown identifiers since we are in the function that they are. And I'm going to add a breakpoint just before we trigger an ADC conversion and I'm going to add 3 in the H register and 80 in the high register. Then we run the code again and then it doesn't do what I wanted to do. You add the breakpoint here, remove that one. We run again until we are here. We add our 3 over here and then our 80 over here and then we check it out. Ah, there we go. Now we have 8 in our lower register and 3 in our high register. And then if we step into, so we return from the function, we can see convert after we stepped 1 is equal to 380. So the high and the low register. Then we can check at locals, which is our local variables for a function. You can see our volts are 0, our run is 0, our convert is 380 hex. So we stop, we go to the end for our breakpoint, and we can see it converted to 4.37 for our floating points, so our volts are now at this voltage and we have run at 
E3, since we converted it back, you can calculate it out. It should be, yeah, it is this number left shifted by one or divided by four. Then I want to simulate a input. So the input I want to simulate is pin D5. So we go to the port D register, then we have our pin, and then we want to set bit five, and then we remove these breakpoints. And then as long as pin D5 is active, we will hit that breakpoint. So I'm just removing all the other breakpoints just to show that we keep hitting the knob while this bit is high. Just run it a few times here now. And if I unset this bit, we run the code and it doesn't hit the breakpoint until I input a breakpoint over here. Now I'm going to add back the breakpoint here just before we read the ADC registers. Then we go to our port D and B. So we are going to look at what the value is in port B over here. The only the lower four bits should set in port D. So next we run over. Just before we inject, we go to our ADC converter and then we set the entire lower half of the two 8-bit registers as FFs. So we continue on. So we now have three FF in our run variable. So on port B our lower four bits are going to go one. So the blue number on port B when we step by one. So we say step into. Apparently I was wrong. It's the upper four bits. So we actually want to break over here. So we run again until we get to where we want to be. We go to set all these bits. We run again. Now we have port D. So we go look at port D. The upper four bits of port D should go high. So the blue color. So we step once. Ah. And there we go. The upper four bits have changed. So red indicates a change, otherwise no change. Okay. And then something else you can look at in the simulator is the disassembly. So you can add breakpoints here as well and see where the code is running. So you can see step here and this little arrow indicates where we are in the code. So you can literally look at the instructions that are being executed. And just for interest sake, these are interrupt vectors. And these two flash locations that actually have numbers that are not 51 will be our UART interrupt interrupts and our ADC interrupt. Then we have our reset vector here that says jump to 34 and 34 is where our program starts directly after the interrupts. So just a quick review of what's going on. We configure our tool as the simulator. We go to our tool chain. We check our optimization. We set that to zero because we wanted to check what, the, what our variables actually do and not what the optimized code will do. Then what we can do once we have started the debugger we can use our process status after we have set our frequency to time functions and check how many cycles there are we can also check what's in the working registers we can use the locals window to check what our local variables are doing if they're not optimized away we can use watch to check any variable at any time and we can use the io window to manipulate the registers like simulating an external input and that's a basic introduction to using the simulator for or Atmos Studio. Uh, like, share, comment and subscribe will be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Have a nice day.